The Apostle John is thrown into the cauldron of boiling oil, an unforgettable scene. Grace and peace, my friend. You are on the channel Bible stories and in tune with the world, knowing that the Lord Jesus performed many miracles and each of them had results. I think that not even in the entire world there would be enough space for the books that would be written. If you've heard that the Apostle John was thrown into a cauldron of boiling oil and miraculously survived, that's right. In this video, we're going to talk about Hello dear viewers, welcome to our channel Bible Stories, where we delve into the rich tapestry of biblical narratives, exploring the profound messages and timeless truths embedded within. Today, we embark on a captivating journey to uncover the remarkable tale of how the Apostle John defied the odds, surviving the ordeal of being boiled in oil. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, leave your like and comment and share this exciting story with your friends and family. For today's narrative, we are going to talk about the Apostle John who was thrown into a pan of hot oil. Follow the narrative. Join us as we unravel the mystery behind this awe-inspiring event and glean insights into the unwavering faith and resilience of this beloved disciple. That event. But before we start the video, I will ask you who are not yet subscribed to the channel to subscribe and bless us with your like. Out of 12 of the apostles called by Jesus, 10 of them died as martyrs. Julius Iscariot, the traitor, took his own life. But the last apostle to die met a very different fate. The Apostle John was one of Jesus' closest disciples, writer of some of the books of the New Testament. John is generally known within the Christian tradition as the beloved disciple. John was the son of Zebedee and Mary Salome. His brother James also belonged to the group of twelve disciples of Jesus. Possibly James was older than John. He's always mentioned first in the Gospels. The Apostle John was a fisherman by profession. His father was a prosperous man in the fishing business, as he had some employees. John would be the youngest of the T.W. Apostles, probably being around 24 years old at the time of Jesus' call. Before becoming one of Jesus' disciples, the Apostle John was a follower of John the Baptizer. John had a first encounter with Jesus, and after a short time, he became one of his regular disciples. Some events recorded in the Gospels help us understand a little about John's personality, character and appearance. On one occasion, the Lord Jesus called John and James sons of thunder, and most likely this designation pointed to the explosive nature of the two brothers. It indicates that normally they were men with controlled emotions, but in certain situations anger soon manifested itself. An example of this can be seen when the inhabitants of a Samaritan village refused to host Jesus. On that occasion, the two brothers immediately suggested, Lord, do you want us to send fire down from heaven to consume them? How he was going. At another time, someone who did not belong to the group of Jesus' twelve apostles was casting out demons. John then went to complain to the master, saying, We saw one who in your name cast out demons who does not follow us, and we forbade him. While such a statement points to a strong temperament, it also indicates the deep love and great loyalty that the Apostle John and his brother had for the Lord Jesus. This means that no one knew Jesus more than John. He walked with Jesus daily. On the great night of the Lord's Supper, he was the one who reclined on Jesus' chest. He personally asked about the ident of the traitor. John was entrusted by the Lord Jesus with the greatest number of responsibilities and was present at almost all moments and events narrated in the New Testament. We highlight three important occasions in Jesus' ministry and John was present there. First, when Jesus resurrected Jairus, his daughter, second, at the time of the Transfiguration, and third, during the period when Jesus was in Gethsemane. 
Furthermore, the evangelist Luke also informs us that John and Peter were the two people charged by the Lord Jesus with taking care of the preparations for the Passover meal or the Lord's Last Supper. At the moment of the crucifixion, the Apostle John is the disciple who appears closest to Jesus on Calvary. He also received from Jesus the task of taking care of Mary, his mother. After Jesus' ascension, John was in Jerusalem, in the assembly of about 120 disciples, when Matthias was chosen by Lot, and he was numbered with the other 11 apostles. John was present at the outpouring of the Spirit on the day of Pentecost, which resulted in 3,000 people being added to the congregation that day. After Stephen's death at the hands of the angry Jews, great persecution arose against the congregation in Jerusalem, and the disciples were scattered. But John, along with the other apostles, remained in Jerusalem. Advancing in age, we have John who witnessed the crucifixion, the ruin of the majestic temple, and was arrested several times as his preaching converted dozens of people to Christianity. But the doctors of the law were increasingly filled with hatred against John for his fidelity to the cause of Christ. They declared that nothing would avail against Christians as long as John's testimony sounded in the ears of the people. For Jesus' miracles and teachings to be forgotten, John's voice would have to be silenced. Like the other apostles, John suffered many persecutions during his life for preaching the Word of God. Around the year 81 after Christ, the Roman emperor called to mission emerged. He began to demand worship of his person as God himself. This was the first emperor in an objective way to persecute Christians as those who refused to worship him as God were flogged, imprisoned, and killed. Deitian provoked John to Rome to be judged for his faith before the authorities. The apostles' virtues were tarnished by false witnesses who accused him of teaching heresies and being a god. For these charges, John was arrested and sentenced to death. John was taken to the center of the Colosseum, where hundreds of people awaited his execution. He was thrown into a cauldron of boiling oil, but the Lord preserved the life of his faithful servant, and not a hair of his was burned in the same way as he preserved the lives of the three Hebrews in the fiery furnace. At that moment, the crowd knelt down and gave glory to God. The Emperor Deitian, astonished by the great miracle, did not dare make a second attempt on John's life. The hand of person execution fell again upon the apostle, and by decree of the emperor, John was banished to the island of Patmos, condemned by because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Some historians argue that Patmos was a prison island under the rule of the Roman Empire, and only the most dangerous prisoners were sent there. In this case, it would still serve as a type of maximum security prison. At the time, prisoners on the island of Patmos were forced to work exhaustively until they died. John's enemies thought that his influence would no longer be meaningful and that he would die from deprivation, forced labor, and suffering. But to the servant of God, his solitary dwelling became the gate to heaven. John had the company of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the heavenly angels. From them, he received instructions to transmit to the churches for all time to come. After the death of Emperor Amission, John was able to leave the island of Patmos and travel back to Ephesus, where he preached until he died of natural causes. Some writers claim that the Apostle John died at such an old age, that in his final days, he had to be carried to Christian meetings. The attention of many pastors preach about this miracle in the cauldron of boiling oil, but there is no biblical verse that gives us the basis to, to say that John was thrown into the cauldron of oil before he was taken to the island of Patmos. What we have in this case is only the tradition of the so-called church fathers of the time stating this. John's story provides us with an illustrative life of how God can use elderly workers.
John was exiled to the island of Patmos when many considered him an old broken reed. His time of service to the kingdom of, of God had already passed. Although banished from the scenes of his daily life, he did not fail to bear witness to the truth. Even on Patmos he made friends, and above all, won souls for the kingdom of God. The miraculous survival of the Apostle John explores the remarkable survival of the Apostle John, who was allegedly thrown into a cauldron of boiling oil, but emerged unscathed by divine intervention. The narrative unfolds within the context of biblical history, shedding light on John's significant role as one of Jesus' closest disciples and his enduring commitment to the Christian faith. One John's identity and role. John, known as the Beloved Disciple, was one of Jesus' closest companions and authored several books of the New Testament. His unwavering devotion to Christ and deep understanding of his teachings shaped his identity as a prominent figure within the early Christian community. 2. The Alleged Ordeal Tradition holds that John faced persecution under the Roman Emperor's decree and was sentenced to death by being thrown into boiling oil. However, miraculously, he emerged unharmed, demonstrating the divine protection bestowed upon him. 3. Divine Intervention The narrative underscores the belief in divine intervention, as John's survival is attributed to God's miraculous intervention, akin to biblical accounts of miraculous deliverance, such as the story of the three Hebrews in the fiery furnace. 4. John's continuing mission. Following his miraculous survival, John was banished to the island of Patmos, where he received divine revelations and continued to spread the message of Christianity until his death. The theme of the miraculous survival of the Apostle John encapsulates the enduring faith and divine protection that characterized early Christian martyrs. John's story serves as a testament to the power of belief and the unwavering commitment of individuals to their faith, even in the face of persecution and adversity. Through his remarkable journey, John inspires believers to trust in God's providence and remain steadfast in their devotion to the Christian faith. As we conclude our exploration of John's miraculous survival, we are reminded of the enduring power of faith and the providence of God in the face of adversity. John's story serves as a beacon of hope, inspiring us to trust in the Lord's unfailing protection and guidance, even in the most daunting of circumstances. May his example embolden us to walk in faith, knowing that with God, all things are possible. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening journey through the pages of Scripture. Until next time, may the blessings of the Lord be upon you, guiding you on your own path of faith and discovery. And you, have you been talking about the Lord Jesus to the people around you? And so far, the Lord has helped us be a collaborator. Subscribe to our channel and share this channel as it has been a blessing in the lives of many people. May the Lord bless.